Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be sharing God's truth with you today. Now, welcome to the month of March. Now, this is a very special month, and the Spirit of God have told us that this month He will be positioning His children. Now, that's why you know we are right now having a 24-hour fasting and prayer. Now, we 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 pray according to the watches if you've not joined us yet come on now join us join the next prayer session join the next prayer session and then see what the lord is doing with us praise god so i invite you especially for this if never if you've never joined us before this should be your month that you should join us praise god now before we go into today's broadcast now it's a new month so i want us to call for our daily bread are you ready are you ready ready listen to me don't be afraid don't be afraid you know what he has said he will never leave us he will never forsake us why he wants us to boldly say the lord is my helper i shall not fear what any man now when he says any man it means anything that is fashioned by man will do unto me i shall not fear so with this faith in your heart can you boldly call forth your daily bread and know that because you call it forth it will come are you ready say this with me say father i declare and i demand my daily bread it comes from you lord so i receive it right now make this declaration say lord this month i shall be properly positioned for greatness in jesus name amen hear me a miracle is taking place in your life today praise god now i told you we're praying today so join the next prayer watch join the next prayer watch jesus gave a parable in luke chapter 18 from verse 1 that and the reason for that parable is to stress the fact that men ought always to pray and not to faint to faint means to give up to faint means to 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 lose heart it means to compromise that thing which you're believing for if you don't pray you will give up you know sometimes people just think oh why must we always pray 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 why must we always you know you know, there are, you know, sometimes you want to think there are even unbelievers who don't pray anything and then their lives are moving on. Hear me, don't be deceived. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Listen to me, there are many people laboring in vain. Why? Because the Lord is not the one involved in their building. The house will be built quite all right. But it's going to be in vain. You know what it means for something to be in vain? It means after that thing is done, you realize that it was not needed. Praise God. You all want to finish building a house, and then the government now comes to tell you that, hey, guy, um, well, we want to construct a road on this place, and then your house has to go down. You know how that's going to be. It's not just the money. It's the time, the effort, all the things you've put inside that building that you're going to lose. You don't want that. You want to build something and it's now a testimony for yourself that, hey, this is what I did. And think about it. You want to do something that for many years to come, it will still stand as a testimony for you. There are people who are rich today, 10 years time, you can't even trace that they were ever rich apart from <laughs> sending memories and, and, and things. But you can trace it to their day. There are people who are highly placed today. A few years time from now, 
you will wonder was this guy really so so and so person why except the lord gives that promotion it is in vain you struggling to get it you may get it but after everything it will be useless you don't want to waste your life like that this is the reason christians pray this is the because when we pray prayer is no oh god do it oh god do it oh god do it eh, no 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 prayer first and foremost is getting the mind of god concerning that issue that's the beginning of prayer that's why you may have heard me say this many times whenever you want to pray your first prayer point should be lord how do i approach this matter how do i pray about this matter give me utterance to pray why i don't want to speak a word that is outside god's will for my life i don't want to speak a words by my emotions because if you pray according to your emotions he will not hear you if you pray according to your anger he will not hear you but if you pray according to his will then he will hear you so that's why whenever we pray the first prayer point that should ring in your heart is lord how do i pray concerning the situation and wait for the spirit of god to begin to feed you with wisdom and knowledge that's what he does ecclesiastes 2 26 tells us god gives to the one that is good in his sight wisdom knowledge and joy that's what god gives you <laughs> god. so i want to pray and I'm, I'm trusting the spirit of god for what wisdom knowledge and joy and when i begin to pray sometimes we pray in the spirit sometimes we pray in our understanding when i begin to pray especially when you pray in the spirit this happens faster when you begin to pray in the spirit suddenly your mind begins to go somewhere your mind begins to dwell on a thing your mind begins to go in a direction a certain knowledge begins to come to you that you didn't know before or your mind didn't really pay attention to now those are the workings of the spirit in our lives so when god begins to reposition you hey guess what guess what he will first of all begin to give you direction for example you just begin to sense in your heart that you are supposed to be somewhere you're supposed to be somewhere you're supposed to be somewhere and then when you want to think about it like um how do i who do i even know there and then you just i really don't know anybody there like but why do i keep feeling i'm supposed to go there all right relax just keep praying when i mean just keep praying anytime it crosses your mind you just say father and, and this is one thing you must learn to do as a child of god sometimes we even the scripture tells us we don't know what we should pray for as we are so one one thing you must learn to always do with the spirit of god is this you make this confession before him say lord you know what i don't know the way you know the way so this is the deal lord if you would just show me what you want me to do i will do it i pray like that every time when i'm faced with any situation I say, lord you know what we don't want to break our head over this issue just show me what you want me to do and i'll do it and before you know what's going on the wisdom of god is going to come so now you're there do i know anybody in this you it's coming to your heart seriously go there go there and and why are you busy waiting and wondering is the lord saying something and then a call comes in and say hey hi hey you know why you're talking to your friend or some whoever is calling you or calls you and then the person says do you know so so and so person has been transferred to that city like oh really I say yeah oh wow maybe that's why i've been yeah see now you will always find out that the lord has gone ahead of you listen when god says he's positioning us make up your mind to live a stress-free life i'm gonna live a stress-free life it doesn't matter what's happening outside i'm protected by him i know i know praise god i know you remember he said he will never leave us he will never forsake us you know the reason he's with us he is with us to tell us always what we ought to do 
And as long as we dwell in him, you remember what he said? He that dwells, David said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. If that's where you dwell, he is just telling you, you are under the shadow of the Almighty. And guess what? He said, I'm going to confess the Lord as my helper. And you see, it, why? Because that's the truth. I'm not praying the Lord should be my helper. I already dwell in the secret place of the Most High. What is the secret place of, place of the Most High? It is that place where the Lord always tells you what to do. That is the secret place. He always tells you what to do. Now, his job is to instruct us. Our job is to carry out his instruction. Now, this is how it works. And that's why Jesus said, if you don't pray, you faint. So when you pray, you listen for that instruction. That's all you do. I may spend one hour, two hours, three hours praying. But hey, from the beginning of that prayer, this is what I'm looking out for instruction i may be praying concerning my finances i may be praying concerning my protection i may be praying concerning my and, and then you're just praying and praying and praying suddenly you you hear a word from the lord and he tells you hey from henceforth do this or start doing this on a frequent basis or start doing this on a daily basis now, many years ago, the Lord gave me this command. He said, you and your family must break bread every day. And when you do, you must declare these words. Now, that's an instruction from the Lord. Now, guess what? That's the instruction he's giving to us to keep us safe. And, and let me tell you this as a child of God. We don't follow God foolishly. We follow him with great intelligence. I've seen Christians get into trouble. I've seen Christians die suddenly. I've seen people who you feel they were mighty men. I've seen terrible things happen to them. And then you look at those things and then you ask yourself, did God fail? But we know God does not fail. If God does not fail, then... I want to take responsibility for my life in God whom I have believed. Now, what do I mean by that? So now I want to go before him and say, Lord, this doesn't look like you. I don't know what happened in that person's situation. I don't know the details of it, but it doesn't look like you. Now, this is what, now when you hear, I want you to listen to this. When you hear that an evil thing has happened to a believer. Now, you pray for the person but most especially it is a time to remind yourself of your own stand with the lord of your own stand you don't go about saying every one of us will surely die one day <laughs> that's not the way to talk because that is not true because even paul said it, we will not all sleep see so when you think you are trying to show empathy or you're trying to you know the bible said mourn those that mourn yes but then don't go and start telling a lie don't go and start speaking the wrong things someone got into trouble empathize with the person hey this shouldn't be stand in faith with the person stand in faith according to truth don't say, well, it happens to everybody. So it's just that it has happened to you. So let's just trust God that. No, sir. Stand in faith. This shouldn't have happened in the first place. Whatever caused this to happen, I'm going to stand with you in faith and trust God that it's going to work together for our good. That's the way to stand with someone in faith. And because when you do that according to truth, then you give room for the Spirit of God. Because I'll tell you the truth, what has happened is not the end of the situation. But you can close it with your negative words. See, the Bible spoke about Adam. Say, God brought all the animals to Adam to see what he will call them. And whatever Adam called them, it was their name. The same thing, different situations will come at you. 
to see what you will call them. And whatever you call them, that is whatever you conclude concerning them, it becomes it. I know my time is up right now, but I'm going to continue tomorrow. Now listen to me. If you've not joined us already, join the next prayer watch. And the Spirit of God will empower you and He will begin to position you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.